What's up strangers? Welcome to the Wealth Game Nation. My name is Vedo and I'm here to help you better understand the Wealth Game and become part of the Wealth Game Nation. In today's video, I will tell you what for me was the most important lesson of my life when it comes to understanding money, investments and the overall economy in general. I wish I had learned this 20 years ago. Literally, my life would have been so much different right now. But you learn as long as you live. Let this be a lesson to you so you can do something different something better with this knowledge in the future. This is a very important video, so make sure you stay until the end. And with that, let's get right into it. In today's agenda, we will look at two catchy, very famous phrases, and those are cash is king and cash is trash. We will examine which one is right. Then we will look at the economic cycle, or as I refer to it, the everything cycle. And then, as usual, we will get into my thoughts. Let's look at the two catchy phrases, cash is king versus cash is trash, and determine which one of them is right. So when people say cash is king, what they are trying to say is that people who have money, they also have power. That is very obvious. What people mean when they say cash is trash is that cash, out of all asset classes, and cash is an asset class, performs the worst over time. So which statement is true? Unfortunately, it's not that simple because they are both true, and I will explain you why. The more appropriate question would be, when is which statement true? And that totally depends on the economic cycle that you are currently in. There are four common phases of the economic cycle, and those are expansion, peak, recovery, and recession. And we will get into all of them right now. The economic cycle. Here we can see the representation of the economic cycle illustrated as a wave. There are a couple of different factors that impact the economic cycle, and those are gross domestic product or GDP. This is essentially all the goods and services that a nation produces. Then there is the consumer price index or CPI. This is basically the data about the rate of inflation. Then we have the stock market, bond yields, the interest rates, money supply or monetary policy. And just a quick reminder, there are two monetary policies, and those are quantitative easing and quantitative tightening. Quantitative easing is when the government, the Fed or European Central Bank is printing money in order to stimulate the economy. Quantitative tightening is when the government, for example, the Fed or the European Central Bank is removing money from the circulation in order to combat inflation. Then we have the jobs market. Then we will look at what sectors to watch out for during which phase of the economic cycle. And then we will assess the overall opportunity during each phase. So, during the recovery phase, the GDP is slowly rising. The consumer price index, the rate of inflation is around 2%. The stock market starts going up. The bond yields start going down. This is because stocks and bonds are total opposites, as they need different market conditions in order to prosper. The interest rates are improving, meaning the Fed or the ECB is lowering interest rates. The monetary policy is quantitative easing, basically the money supply is increasing, the Fed or the ECB is printing money in order to stimulate the economy. The job market starts increasing. Then the sectors to watch during this phase are industrials, materials, and real estate. And the overall opportunities start going down because most asset classes start to go up in value. And therefore, whatever you decide to buy, you would be buying it at a higher price. The next phase in the economic cycle is the expansion. During this time, the GDP is rising. The consumer price index is also rising. Inflation starts to creep up. The stocks gain momentum, the bond yields go down even further, the interest rates are still improving, basically lower interest rates, loaning money becomes much more cheaper, it goes together with the monetary supply, quantitative easing, money is being printed, the job market is strong, and the sectors to watch during this phase are technology and consumer discretionaries. The overall opportunities are going down because, as I said, anything you buy during these two phases you are buying it at a higher price. This is where the phrase cash is trash comes in. And this is what people mean. During this time, cash is losing value because it's being printed much more and everything else goes up in value. But I beg to differ. And I will tell you why in just a moment. So stick with me. Next phase in the economic cycle is the slowdown. The GDP starts to go down. The consumer price is index starts to rise even further. Inflation starts to get out of hand, just like we had it in June 2022, when inflation peaked at 9.1%. The stock market gets into an overvalued, stupid territory. This is like we had it in November 2021, where, for example, 
when Tesla had a P ratio of over a thousand. Quick information for those of you who do not know what the price to earnings ratio represents, and that is it tells you how much money do you need to pay for one dollar of earnings of that company. If Tesla has a thousand PE ratio, that means you're paying thousand dollars for every single dollar of their earnings. Historically, value companies have had a PE ratio of around 15, and tech companies have had a PE ratio of around 25. Also, during slowdown, the bond yield starts going up, the interest rates start deteriorating, basically, the ECB or the Fed starts raising rates, the monetary policy changes to quantitative tightening basically removing money out of circulation in order to combat the inflation. The job market also starts decreasing. When the job market starts decreasing, companies start to lay off people. When people are laid off, they start saving money. When people are saving money, they are no longer spending money. When they are no longer spending money, there is no need from companies to produce more things. Therefore, the companies don't need too many workers because there is no need to produce goods, which nobody then is going to buy. And this is a vicious cycle. This is the way the government, the Fed, the ECB, whoever, tries to combat inflation. Sectors to watch during the slowdown are materials, energy, and financials. Now, opportunities during this phase start going up. The last phase economic cycle is the recession. This is when the GDP is falling sharply. This is when the consumer price index starts going down and eventually bottoms. The stock prices fall significantly and eventually bottom. The bond yields are going up, the interest rates are further deteriorating, money gets much more expensive to borrow, therefore even more difficult for companies to get loans and grow. As we said, money's monetary policy is quantitative tightening, job market, as we said, even more decreases, and the sectors to watch during recession are utilities, healthcare, consumer staples, and so on. This is because during recession, you need to pay your utilities. You need to have healthcare and you need to buy basic goods. And in the recession, the overall opportunities are going up. This is where the phrase cash is king comes from. But again, I beg to differ and I will tell you right now why. So let's get into my thoughts. I think right now is important to identify the cycle. I believe we are in the last phase. We are in the recession. We haven't hit rock bottom yet, but we will be hitting bottom soon. In the future, it is important to keep an eye on the economic cycle and ride the wave and don't be under it. In practice, for me, that means that during recovery and expansion, I will do less investing and I will do more cash hoarding into a war chest. This is when people are saying cash is trash. I beg to differ. I think this is the right time to save money because there is money to be saved. Everything you buy during these two phases, you're basically increasing your cost basis because you are paying higher prices for whatever you are trying to buy. Then during slowdown and recession, I think it's better to do more investing and do less cash hoarding into a war chest. People are now saying, save money, save money, save money. No, it's the wrong time. You should have already been saving money. Now is not the time to save money. Now is time to invest your money. If you don't have the money, then it's a different story. Lastly, I want to share with you is a story about Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is the best investor of all times. He has had a 19% annualized return on his investments for 65 years. This is beating the market, which has around 10% annualized returns in the same period. However, Warren Buffett has been underperforming the market since the housing crash in 2008 or 2009, all the way until 2021. This is where all newer investors, younger investors, started calling Warren Buffett a relic of the past, a dinosaur, somebody who no longer understands investing. Over this period of time, while underperforming the market, Warren Buffett has saved up over 30% of his portfolio in cash. This was equivalent to over $160 billion. When he was asked by journalists, why does he have so much cash? He wasn't taking the time to explain to people in detail like I'm doing it right now. Basically, in other words, he was saying, whatever I buy now, I will be buying at inflated prices and I will be destroying my cost basis. 2022 comes around and Warren Buffett starts going on shopping sprees. In Q1, Warren Buffett has deployed over 45 billion of his 160 billion into the stock market. Then throughout the year, he continued to buy companies such as TSMC, HPQ, and so on. So don't take it from me. I'm just a random guy on YouTube. Take it from the man himself, 
Warren Buffett. If you find value in this video, I kindly ask you to like this video, subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. This helps me a lot when you guys do it and it does not cost you anything. No need to smash any button, just click it gently and I will be a happy camper. And now, you tell me, what do you think about the economic cycle? Did you know about this before? Give me a feedback, I would love to hear from you. That's it for now, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next video.